So I've been using the iPhone 8 for the last two weeks as my daily driver and would like to tell the average user what this phone is like in the real world. This is the iPhone 8 real world review video for everyone. Let's assume that you watch my specs video and go from there. We begin with the camera. The iPhone 8 has a 12 megapixel back camera and a 7 megapixel front camera. Apple decided to keep the same cameras that were found in the iPhone 7, but did update them a little bit. The camera now can record 4K at 24 or 60 frames per second and does it with a new format to keep the files smaller. Overall, these cameras do get the job done and you will not be disappointed. Viewing media on the 720p screen may be disappointing, but once exported to something like a TV or computer, the pictures and videos shine. Other than the recording options, I didn't notice a difference in camera quality from the iPhone 7 to the iPhone 8. In the time of owning this phone, I took zero pictures with the front camera, but here are some samples. Enjoy. The camera receives a 9 out of 10, but it is on thin ice. Apple needs to do something with it next year. The phone comes with iOS 11 from day one and will be updated a lot over the next couple of years. When you compare iOS 11 to the older iOS 10, you start to notice some major differences. There are too many features to go over, but here are some crucial ones that I found. The most important part of the software is the simplicity and usability. When picking up the phone, the screen lights up. Going further, if you have any notifications, you can glance at them and decide what to do, or 3D touch to expand the notification. Before you unlock the phone, there are a ton of widgets and notification settings allowing you to complete some task and get back to life. Slide over to the right and you have access to the full camera, whether it's taking still photos or 4K at 60 frames per second. Slide to the left and you'll find a bunch of widgets which is called the Today View. The notification shade has dramatically changed and makes me wish I could put a custom wallpaper on it. To me, it is weird. It is essentially the lock screen, which is either lazy on Apple's part or easier for the consumer. Regardless, I want the old notification shade back. The Messages app has been slightly updated to look a little bit cleaner when compared to iOS 10. Siri has been updated to sound natural, and I'm very surprised with that. Hey. It reminds me of how the Google Assistant sounds. IHS market has not yet done it. Apple Maps has come a long way and has been slightly updated. I personally use Google Maps and will stick to that. I will admit that I like this year's Apple Maps and feel that Apple is going in the right direction. The Apple Music app is still missing the scrubbing feature. It is clearly done on purpose because videos still allow you to scrub. The App Store has been redesigned to have a modern touch to it. Not sure if I like this. The phone supports HEIF and HEVC formats, which is a way for you to take pictures and videos without destroying your storage. The nice thing about the software is that it can be installed onto older devices. So if you have a phone like the iPhone 7, the iPhone 8 will look and act almost exactly the same. Certain things like raised awake will not work on the iPhone 6 or older, but there are only a few software features that separate the iPhone 8 from the older devices, which is nice that Apple does not limit this on the older phones. Well, too much. The software is very stable and gets the job done, but there is always room for improvement. The software will change over time, but for iOS 11 on the iPhone 8, I will give it a 7.5 out of 10. The changes are very subtle, but somewhat useful. Overall, the battery is pretty good. It might be because the battery is new, but it seems like it does last a very long time. Even with heavy usage, I'm still able to get through the day, but it would be impossible to get through the next day without charging it. With light usage, I should be able to get two or three days out of the battery, which is kind of crazy. I still charge the phone overnight, and I'm a little butthurt that Apple put a smaller battery in this phone. That is literally the reason why I got rid of my iPhone 6S last year. With this said, I think the battery deserves a 7 out of 10. So why buy this phone? The retail cost is $150 more than the iPhone 7, so is it worth the $150 difference? And the answer is no, not at all. I don't think that is worth the money that I paid for this phone. The reason behind this is because I'm coming from an iPhone 7. The processor is not only faster, but also has more cores, allowing the phone to become faster without hurting the battery as much as it seems like it should. There is a neural engine in this phone, but Apple makes it seem like the iPhone X's neural engine is the only thing that matters. The battery is smaller, but why? The camera is the same. The only differences that I found were slow sync, 4K recording at 24 or 60 frames per second, and slow motion at 1080p all the time. Regardless, the camera takes amazing stills and videos, and the differences lie in the recording power. The display is the same, but it has true tone, which I found to be pointless. The stereo speakers are nice and slightly louder, but it is not the reason to buy the iPhone 8. Wireless charging and fast charging may be cool, but there are cheap alternatives to do the same thing on the iPhone 7. And that's all I can find. Maybe I'm missing something, or maybe Apple forgot to add more things. 
I mean, the frame is different, but that's not really a feature. With this said, I think the only downside to upgrading is losing a little bit of the battery, so this category receives a 7 out of 10. It just isn't worth it to me. The last category may be the most important part, which is the durability along with the repair cost. With all this money spent on the phone, some of the money should go towards durability, and does it? There are words thrown around like strongest glass on a smartphone, sapphire glass, series 7000 aluminum, and so on and so on. But what does this mean? Well, the glass is exactly that, glass. If you drop it hard enough, it will break. Bending seems to be the thing of the past, but there are still some worries. There is still glass on the front and the back, and it will break, regardless of what Apple says. The iPhone 8 has been out for a couple weeks and costs about $149 for Apple to fix the screen. At the time of this review, it is very difficult to find a screen replacement and will cost most likely $250 or more. Since the back is glass, this will be something that needs to be replaced. It will cost an outrageous $349 at Apple, but this is because they will give you a new phone rather than fixing yours. You can try fixing it yourself in the future, but you will have to be careful with the components around it, like the attached wireless charging panel. The camera lens is made out of glass, even though Apple claims that it is sapphire glass. They aren't entirely lying, but it's not made out of pure sapphire whatsoever. Once the parts become available, you can have a store replace it and they will charge somewhere around $45 to $65. Lastly, after a year or so, the battery will need to be replaced. These will run about $15 to $25 for OEM or OEM quality, and will cost $60 to $85 to have someone replace it. Apple does replace all these parts with OEM products obviously, and may or may not charge less than third parties, but you will have to make an appointment for Apple to help you out. Either way, it is best to get three opinions and find people that know what they're talking about. Given all that was stated, this earns a 7 out of 10. Now should you buy this phone? With a score of 75%, I believe the answer is yes, but only if you own an iPhone 6s or older. I have been using this phone as my daily driver for the last couple of weeks and I'm looking forward to the iPhone 10, which will hopefully have a review in the next couple of months. Sure, there are some things I wish that it had, like a headset jack, but this isn't a bad phone. Overall, it is actually a really good phone. If you're coming from an iPhone 7, I hope you don't buy this phone. But if you're coming from an iPhone 6s or older, I would highly recommend this phone. If you're coming from an Android device, the screen size and quality may be a deal breaker for you, but at least visit a store and check out the phone. You can go to pretty much any store that sells tech and you'll find an iPhone 8 or 8 Plus on display. So go play with one. You might like it. If you enjoyed this video, let me know along with any questions that you have. But here's my question. Has Apple disappointed you with this phone? Let me know in the comments section or on Twitter at MattofRWR. Thanks for watching.